What's up world, it's your boy Drew Marcy, rap coach extraordinaire, mentor to the motivated, leader of the legends, and in today's video, we're gonna show you Jay-Z's business moves that you can take in your career right now. Now, a lot of videos about Jay-Z's rise to a billion are telling you kind of just big platitudes, real simple, like, yeah, you know, build a team like Rockefeller. In this video, we're actually gonna give you practical tips that you can use today, things you can use today using Jay-Z's blueprint. See what I did there? So let's get into it, Jay-Z's business moves. All of the content for this video is gonna be taken from the books Three Kings, Jay-Z, Diddy, Dre, and Hip Hop's multi-billion dollar rise in Empire State of Mind, how Jay-Z went from the street corner to the corner office, both by Zach O'Malley Greenberg, who also happened to write the article that broke the news that Jay-Z just made a billion. So be sure to go check those books. They're really, really in depth. They're in the video description box below, but that's where the info is coming from. An expert on how Jay made all that money. Jay-Z business move number one, look for undervalued assets. Jay-Z had pulled off the same feat he'd achieved with Rockaware, convincing a multi-billion dollar company in search of cool points to cough up a nine-figure sum for a generic product upon which he'd sprinkled his stardust. The title move also smacked of his Armand de Brognac strategy. Once again, he had purchased a generic European consumer product that Americans hadn't heard of, dressed it up, and peddled it as a high-end specialty item. The most important tip that will flow from everything else we'll talk about in this video is identifying undervalued or unknown assets and making them into money-making opportunities. An asset in this case, we'll just use for the purposes of this video, being a person, place, or thing whose actual value, how much money or influence or value they can bring you, is lower at, at the cost of acquiring it, and we'll get into that, lower than it should be. An undervalued person, place, or thing that can make you a lot of money and a lot of value. Undervalued asset number one is people, right? And you as an artist, you need to build a team, you already know that, but you might be sort of tight on the budget. Now, one way online that you can find undervalued assets is going to freelancer sites like Fiverr.com, Freelancer.com, and Upwork.com and finding something like a virtual assistant to help you with social media duties that you don't want to deal with or so they can be handling your social media while you're in the studio. Now, the reason I say that these are extremely undervalued is you can get a high quality uh, freelancer for like $5 an hour, literally. Uh, to do all of your social media, set up your posts. You can find another separate one to get your pictures looking real good and throwing the right presets on it for $5 a month. You can find another one uh, to make your captions really exciting. You can, for $15 an hour, have a full staff doing all of your social media while you're out creating the great music that you can. This is an extremely undervalued asset, especially in the music industry. So go to those sites, we'll link them in the video description box below, and start hiring a team everybody's got five dollars rather than just eating terrible food that's just gonna make you tired use that five dollars to start building your team and use that undervalued asset undervalued asset number two is places right and when I say places I mean online congregations groups of people that you can convert to your fans so you probably already know that there are forums and websites and pages and groups that have hip-hop fans people that discuss hip-hop one undervalued asset I'm looking at for 2019 in the hip-hop game is Reddit, right? I've always thought, you're maybe like me, that Reddit was just one of those sites where neck-bearded trolls just chill out and argue about really technological stuff that I don't understand. But I found that there are a lot of good subreddits that are specifically about making music, rap, and there's a lot of fans. It's really active. Uh, that's a one place for you to go check out. There might be an undervalued asset full of fans Furthermore, there's a way that Reddit, when you look up a certain topic, it shoots up in the Google algorithm. So if you have a successful topic on Reddit, it will more likely be on the Google algorithm. And then all the searches are working to promote you. So go check out Reddit. I'm still doing a little investigation with it, but I think that that's an undervalued asset for a place to promote. And undervalued asset number three is things, a camera. 
whoa, cameras, right? Cameras, cameras, right? You can get the cameras that I'm using here for as little as 150 to 250, right? These are called DSLR cameras, digital SLR camera. I don't know what SLR stands for, but it's the industry standard that people like YouTubers use in order to shoot video. If you can get a refurbished camera that is like YouTube quality, like you see me here with, for around 150 to 250. Now, we're gonna explain how to flip that in a second. So if you hear the price and you're thinking that 150 is supposed to go to my studio or something like that, I'm gonna explain how we're gonna have that make you money in tip number two. But in the short term, consider getting an underbind asset like a camera when we're in the age of content creation in order to start making co product, right? Making content. Now, if you're using a virtual assistant in conjunction with the content that you're shooting with the refurbished camera, now you're starting to build an empire and as we go through these tips you'll see how all of these things can start to make money on their own that's the point of an investment for your deals to make you other deals and that indeed is jay-z business move number two use deals to make other deals in december 2007 jay-z took his next step professionally agreeing to a 10-year 150 million dollar deal with concert giant live nation that would encompass music touring and his thirst for outside business ventures the pact includes included $50 million up front, plus $10 million for each of at least three albums, $20 million for certain licensing rights, and $25 million meant to finance Jay-Z's investments. $25 million meant to finance Jay-Z's other investments. The most important part of that quote that we just heard is that part of his deal, his upfront money in his deal with Live Nation to make this new thing that we would now call Rock Nation was upfront money to get him other deals, to put into other investments. Now, again, for you on a practical level, if you buy something like that really cool camera for an affordable price, you can flip that and use that deal, that undervalued asset, to start shooting content for other people in your area, in your neighborhood. So, for example, the two cameras that you see us using right here, I also use those cameras, which I got for a refurbished deal, to produce a podcast for a couple extra thousand dollars a month with some influencers in the LA area, right? So this deal is making me other deals. You can also use that team that you hire on the cheap to secure you other deals. For example, my video editor that's cutting it up. What up, Ben? You can leave this in the video. It's kind of cool. My video editor that we're using right here to shoot all this lovely stuff. What up, Ben? You can leave this in the video. I am currently securing other deals for him and his team, his video editing team, to edit other videos, right? So the person that I find I'm trying to get him other deals and then of course I'm gonna take my finders fee. I'm sorry Ben, you know I gotta do it, but we all gonna make money together. I'm taking that undervalued asset of a very talented video editor using the cameras, using the talented VA, using the talented team, and then getting more money. Use your deals to make other deals. Jay-Z business move number three, disrespect can pay dividends. Disrespect can pay dividends. In May 2006, Frederick Rousseau, the managing director of the company behind Cristal Champagne, the brand historically preferred by Russian czars, was asked by a reporter from The Economist if the rap world's preference for Cristal had tarnished the brand's image. What can we do? He said, we can't forbid people from buying it. Also, during the late 90s, Jay-Z wore a lot of clothing by the European designer Iceberg. He often donned the brand at concerts and soon found his fans doing the same. So Damon Dash, Jay-Z's right-hand man, arranged a meeting with the company's brass hoping to land an endorsement deal. He and Jay-Z demanded millions of dollars and the use of a private jet. The Iceberg executives offered free clothes. Needless to say, there was no deal and Jay-Z and Dash decided they would try the do-it-yourself approach. One of the most common mistakes I see rappers, especially online, is they use perceived disrespect, perceived slights to just get angry and just try to get into beef rather than using that disrespect to pay them more dividends, right? So Napoleon Hill, the author of Think and Grow Rich, would say, with every crisis comes an opportunity. Another great way to think of this is success is the best revenge, right? So I'm gonna suggest from a practical tip is when you get into a flame war with a troll, there are ways, this is really sly, we used to do this, God help me for admitting this stuff, but when you get into a flame war with a troll on a forum, especially if it's a forum where you can bump the post, 
What I'm gonna suggest you do is get into a debate with this person. Don't go crazy, don't get them coming out of their mom's basement, you know, with the neck beard and coming after you, but get into a little debate when you have a post that you're trying to promote your music or whatever, and the person will go back to you, because most people who are trolls, most people are losers who are arguing, no, 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 you're whack, huh? those kind of people, those are the people that are I have too much time, they're bored, they hate themselves because you know they're pimple faced and all they can do is troll behind the key keyboard, right? Those are the type of people that will take the time to argue with you. So you're getting a little sparring match in this forum and while secretly they think that they're getting you and all that, all that's really happening is they're bumping the post. They're bumping the post of your information or whatever you're promoting. So this is one of the things we did back in the day to get how to rap popping, especially back in the old Genius Forum days. Anybody who watches us from Genius remembers this, right? So get into a flame war with the troll. This is a sly move and you'll get your post bumped and bumped and bumped and bumped and more and more views come your way. Use the disrespect. To pay dividends. Cheesy business move number four, patience can beat power. Michelangelo has a quote, says Cobbin. I'm not gonna get it right, but he said when he looks at a piece of stone, he sees the imagined already in the stone, and his job is just to chip away at the excess. I think that's Jay. You can't go fast when you're chipping marble. You f around and mess up the whole thing. I think that's what he's now doing. He's taking his time. Tap by tap by tap to build this masterpiece. Jay-Z is the consummate patient professional. I've been using the word consummate a lot lately. He's the consummate patient professional and he's planned all these moves up to a billion over time. You can do the same and I'm gonna suggest from a practical level, in order to take advantage of the times in which you might lose motivation or you might be lacking in patience, why not use systems in order to stock up a vault, a content vault of content that you can use and post when you're on vacation, when you got exams if you're in school, if you're just working on your album, anything that could hold you back, build up a vault. Two best ways to do this. First, use automated systems like Buffer.com, Hootsuite, sites like that in order to schedule and pre-schedule all of your content in advance. If you know you're gonna be away for a week, if you know there's probably gonna be a Saturday and Sunday where you're really depressed or whatever, or lacking in motivation, or turning up, right, getting lit, make sure to have a content vault ready to go so it's a posting while you're doing other things. That will help, all right? That will help make the long game, playing the long game, especially with content. Also, if you're taking our advice to get an affordable VA for five, ten dollars an hour, you can have that person, you can constantly be sending them stuff or putting it in a cloud uh, folder like on dropbox.com and things like that. So they're posting while you're doing other things and you're always slowly, slowly being consistent to lead to that billion dollars, million followers, whatever you try and do in this game. Jay-Z business move number five, know your worth. Jay-Z would never cut the price of his crack cocaine to $9. Like an airline executive refusing to slash fares on unsold seats two hours before takeoff, Jay-Z didn't want to condition his customers to expect discounts, a philosophy that would follow him into the music business. And the last business move is all about not conditioning your fans or people in your life to expect discounts, thus having less revenue and not being able to get that billy like ho, ho, right? So what I would suggest on a practical level is remove the mentality of the homie price from your vocabulary. We all know what the homie price is, right? You have a certain price that you go for your friends and then you have a price for people that you don't know. Everybody in LA does it, I do it, right? So what I do is my price, my ideal price for my features or interviews, my press, whatever I'm doing, I always put it 20% above whatever the industry average is. So when I meet somebody who I don't know or don't like even but wanna get some money, I'll give them that price, 20% above. Then when a homie comes by and the homie price, I just offer them the industry standard and if they're a true homie, they really already understand, right? So what you wanna do is change your homie price to 20% above, and then when you actually have a homie, right, it's just industry standard, and that's a great way to know your worth and make sure that you're not losing any money and you're not giving discounts. So that is Jay-Z's business moves with real practical steps, not just a bunch of platitudes or showing you how he made his money. Let's make you some money. Now, as always, at the end of these videos, I want to ask you a question, right? What of these Jay-Z business moves are you using right 
right now are going to start using today because all these things you can actually start using today i read every comment i like every comment you already see in the video you know what i'm saying so let's get to that if you're interested in our free book as well be sure to check the video description box below we talk about that but i need to see your comments i need to see your answers which jay-z strategy are you about to use and i'll see you on the next one peace